I live in a country. You live in a country. Even the homeless man down the street lives in a country. Countries are everywhere, and unless you live in some very specific areas through some sort of political loophole, you can't escape that damn oppressive government. That is, unless you up and start an entirely new country. And that's exactly what the subject of today's video did. Or at least, sorta. We're gonna start in 1820, where our entrepreneur goes by the name of Gregor McGregor. Now with a name that sounds like it was made up by a kindergartner, you would think that this guy was a wholesome, fun-loving explorer who just wanted to start up Utopia for him and the lads. Well, you'd be wrong, because Gregor was sleazier than a used car salesman. Born in 1786, Gregor spent much of his early life in Scotland before joining the British Army at age 16. Gregor wasn't a particularly good soldier, but due to his family's wealth, they paid around 450 pounds to make him an officer immediately after joining, and two months later he was promoted to lieutenant, this time with actual skill and not daddy's money. At some point, Gregor found himself in the various conflicts as the Napoleonic War was in full swing at the time, but there was one problem. Despite Gregor having to amass the rank of captain by August 1805, this rank was again simply purchased for around 900 pounds instead of waiting the seven years generally needed to gain such a rank. So now you have a captain who has done the 19th century equivalent of buying levels in Skyrim, but instead of being able to open up master chess, Gregor is suddenly expected to lead soldiers into battle with little to no military experience. Gregor realized the predicament he was in and did what any self-respecting captain would do. He tucked tail and ran. Now if any other soldier had pulled a stunt like McGregor, they would immediately have been discharged from the army. But Gregor, being the smooth talker that he was, was able to negate almost any punishment that would have been brought upon him. He was so good at spreading these alternate facts that he may even manage to weasel his way into being promoted to Major for a short time. But just as it seemed that McGregor could lie his way out of anything, his military career came to an abrupt end when he got into a minor argument with a superior officer and was promptly asked to resign. He was then refunded the £1,350 or $104,000 when adjusted for inflation that he had spent on early promotions throughout his military career. Good thing phones weren't around back then, because McGregor would definitely have been the kind of guy to spend hundreds of dollars on a mobile game or something. Having left the British Army in less than... favorable terms, McGregor was searching for his next big scam, and after his at-the-time wife died, and his wealth was stripped from him, he turned to the New World as the place for him to rebuild his now tattered reputation. And to say that he was able to accomplish this goal would be a stretch. Actually, it'd be a flat-out lie. Let me explain. So once Gregor reached the Americas in 1812, he took to calling himself Sir Gregor, and he claimed to be a knight of the Portuguese Order of Christ. Liar! But Gregor spent the next couple of years bumbling around in South America, doing whatever a 20-something year old scumbag would do at the time, until in 1820 he was granted 8 million acres of undeveloped jungle by the King of the Mosquito People, George Frederick Augustus, in exchange for rum and jewelry. So now our titular con man had in his possession a piece of land larger than Maryland, and what do you think he did with it? Did he A. Run a long and complex scam where he sold various plots of land to the British public advertised as a lush tropical utopia? B. Donate the land to native families? Or C. Travel back to England to rest on his riches and read a completely true, totally not fabricated autobiography detailing his varied and adventurous life? I'll give you a second to figure out your answer. A. The answer is A. Of course Gregor didn't do anything respectable with his newly amassed land, and instead devised one of the largest scams in history. Having dubbed the land Poyes, he traveled to Europe and started drumming up hype around his newly founded country. Gregor began selling his land for two shillings and three pence an acre to unsuspecting Englishmen who believed that Poyes was a tropical paradise free of insects and disease. And in November 1822, a boatload of Poyes hopefuls arrived in South America expecting to see a lush, fertile land ripe for the taking. Unfortunately, what they did find was, well, a muggy, undeveloped, bug-filled jungle, not the tropical paradise described by Gregor. To make matters worse, shortly after arriving, the captain of the ship took off during a storm, leaving the majority of the settlers stranded until further ships from Europe could arrive. The second ship departed in March 1823, with about 200 settlers aboard, and once they arrived in Poyes, they too quickly realized that they had been tricked. The immigrants did attempt to start building some sort of settlement, but in fact, Gregor had lied yet again, and instead of being disease-free like promised, it was in fact very disease-full, with all sorts of fun sicknesses like malaria and yellow fever infecting the group. By the time the group was rescued by pilgrims from a colony in Belize, more than 160 of the original 250 settlers had died from various tropical ailments. And it wasn't like the remaining settlers could just go back to living their lives once they returned to Europe. Many of the travelers had invested their entire life savings into their land, and some even converted all their money into Poyosa dollars, leaving them pretty much destitute once they returned home. Now you'd think that once word got around that somebody had pretty much stolen hundreds of people's life savings before shipping them off to a non-existent country to die, the authorities would start looking into the person who was responsible for all this nonsense. 
but McGregor proved yet again that he was just one step ahead of everyone. Once McGregor realized that people didn't take too kindly to the whole getting people to trust me wholeheartedly with their futures so I can rob them of everything they own prank, he booked it to France before his crime could catch up with him. Of course, he didn't start being a model citizen all of a sudden just because he nearly got caught. In fact, almost as soon as he arrived in France, he began selling even more plots of prime Poyos land to the French public. Even though McGregor's reputation in England may have been tarnished, the people of France had no way of checking his eBay satisfaction rating, so he was able to sell the French Nouvelles Nouveste company 500,000 acres of premium Poyosa land. Novelle even went so far as to prepare a crew of 30 men to make the treacherous journey across the pond to survey their newly bought land. Luckily, the French law enforcement proved to be slightly less incompetent than their English counterparts and apprehended McGregor and threw him into prison. Now, of course, Gregory McGregor, being a wealthy Englishman in 19th century Europe, he wasn't in prison very long, and with the help of his lawyers, he wrote a 5,000 word legal statement that, while being almost entirely fictional, <laughs> convinced the English courts to set him free. Gregor returned to England where he continued to try and sell plots of Poyosa land with much less success than his previous endeavors, proving that the third try is in fact not the charm. He eventually traveled back to Venezuela in 1838, where he continued to live out the rest of his days in shame of what he did. Nah, just kidding. I can't imagine this guy being suddenly all remorseful for all the things he'd done just because he nearly got caught. Gregor McGregor died December 4th, 1845, and was buried with full military honors by the Venezuelan government. But his family back in Scotland scrubbed him and the fictitious country he created from all their records as one last final act of justice. Coincidentally, the land that was once Poyos, now part of Honduras, has yet to be developed even in the 21st century. Maybe the great land of Poyos was never meant to be. Or maybe it was just the result of some scumbag European who robbed hundreds of people before sending them to their deaths. I'll let you decide. As always, thanks for watching.